welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday. It's Michelle and I am um, the leader today, very excited, um, and I am very proud to have Wally. Wally, say hi to everybody. Hello, hello. Honored to be on the Mortgage Coach call again, so thanks so much for having me. And Shane, welcome. Hey, thank you so much for having us back, guys. Yeah, we're very excited, guys. We have um, everybody, um, Todd um, and Dave and, um, oh my God, my brain is stopping, is they have other things to do. We have a new grandbaby on the way, so we're very excited. Um, that is where um, our other partner is today. So um, we are going to have an exciting meeting about talking about how to deal with some difficulty. Um, I think uh, Wally, you'll be able to tell us a lot about how we're dealing with, you know, rate shoppers and how to kind of change their mindset. I think anybody who was on the script of Palooza uh, a week ago Wednesday um, got some great insight. And I think what we want to do is take that to the next level and really address your concern. So Marcy, um, I cannot see any participants. So if anybody raises their hand, can you let us know? Um, I don't have access to that screen. Um, but uh, Wally, take it away. See what we can do. All right. I <laughs> appreciate it. So the first thing we will, I guess I was asked to talk about is Shane, I'm going to read this and then we'll talk more about it, but Shane and Shane and Wally kind of give perspective on coming team leader and, and Shane and Shane's execution of the role. So Shane started with me four years ago. It'll be five years of September. And he was, uh, came in as an LOA, then he grew his way up to production partner and and then a production manager for the team right now. And, you know, he, he helps manage about 60 million worth of our, uh, my hundred million for the team. Um, and he, he, that's just, that's just the power of leverage. I mean, if I was still a one man show, I'd still be closing 20, 30 million. Um, but you know, we're knocking down the door of 500 loans or 500 families help this year. So Shane, Shane's got a great, great perspective from being on the, um, the ground level of, building our team and also a lot of the technologies that allows them to go faster, faster, better, smarter on a daily basis. Right, Shane? Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest thing is is just, you know, working together and utilizing the, the team that we have as leverage. And, you know, I've I've been uh, very blessed for the opportunity to provide leverage to Wally. And uh, Wally's provided lots of opportunity to have other people on the team, you know, have me provide the same or even bigger opportunity. Um, for, for me to leverage leverage my time, leverage Wallace's time, thus, you know, every, it's a win-win for everybody across the board. Yeah, and, and Shane, Shane's income is doubling this year. My income doubled about two years ago, and, and the more leverage that we provide each other, the more opportunity we have. Um, we focus on abundance, uh, not scarcity. If it's a deal that he feels is his, it's his. If it's a deal that I think it's ours, you know, he lets me have it. And not many not many people look at it that way. They feel it's like, hey, what's mine is mine and go get your own. Um, that's a lot of scarcity mindset and then there's plenty of that in the mortgage business. And one thing I tell Shane, his secret weapon, his secret, his secret powers is how coachable he is. And uh, he's always focused on being that, that sponge. Can I ask a question, Shane? Um, because this is, this is really important. We have a lot of people on the mortgage coach community that want to take up to the next level. And Wally, as you and I both know that we can't, we can't do it all ourselves. It's, it's impossible. Um, you know, we kill each other and do 16 hours a day and you, you really don't do a good job. So, you know, Shane, you're, you're being his right hand man. Um, how, did, how did you, can you tell me how you started a little bit, what your roles were and then how they've graduated over the next year? Would that be okay, Wally? Yeah, yeah, and, and there's zero secrets. I am probably the most biggest open book that you can ever imagine. So Shane, run away with it. Perfect, yeah. So. Wally recruited me, um, I'm pretty sure we've told this story a couple of times on, on Mortgage Coach, but it's so good, I'll tell it again, right? So Mortgage, uh, Wally literally met with me for the opportunity to get an in with the realtor. That's the only reason why he even had lunch with me. <laughs> so uh, when he came over and met with me, I literally had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I was a, I was literally a typical millennial at the time. And, uh, and you know, basically going through college, didn't know what I was doing. Uh, still, yes, I lived with my parents when I met with Wally and, um, I, I didn't know what I was doing, uh, what I was going to do with Wally or with the team. I knew I loved, I loved Wally. I knew I, lo I loved his presence. I, I loved what he, 
uh, his servant's heart and mentality from it. And I just wanted to work with him. So I came on, uh, offered to work for free for 90 days. And, and uh, while well, his HR department said that they had to pay me. So uh, jumped on making, you know, what, $10 an hour or something like that to start. And uh, just literally didn't really have much of a, much of a path. I mean, it was, it was truly entrepreneurial on, on both me and Wally's sense and, and kind of failing as we went forward. So I think the difference is, is Wally took the time to find someone that, uh, that did share the same uh, core values, right? And go through and, and just really take it and run with it. So uh, from that, I just pretty much started making a manual of, of things that, you know, Wally's pretty good at what he does, right? I think it's safe to say. So, um, so just taking notes and figuring out what he does at a high level um, and figuring out a way on how can I reduplicate that myself and uh, systemizing things that, that Wally does in his sleep and, and breathing, just doing mortgage and figuring out how can I reduplicate some, from someone who doesn't know how to spell mortgage, how can I reduplicate that in my world and, and add the same value to Wally as he does to, to, uh, to other buyers. So from that sense, uh, yes, I worked the, four, worked the 60, 70 hour uh, weeks and, and killed myself there as well. And, uh, and then just started growing my business to where I needed more people uh, below me and, and around me to, to help leverage and, and help grow the business there. So um, kind of where we're at today is, yes, I'm still working the 60 hours and I've reached the point of, of my career where uh, if we're looking at the five levels of, of leadership on John Maxwell, um, I see this to where uh, once I reach the top of my capacity to where uh, I'm limited to not be able to help others uh, and fall in line with that legacy, that top legacy tier, then I need to now go into help having leverage below and around me uh, to be able to provide opportunities to those. So that's kind of what we're doing now is we're just building a bench and and uh, helping grow our team and support team in LOAs. So um, I think the biggest well, well, one thing one thing I've told Shane multiple times and I'll tell him until I'm blue in the face is his opportunity is his responsibility. His opportunity is his responsibility. His opportunity is not my responsibility. It's his. He's one of the most self-accountable, self-disciplined people you ever meet, and he's not about the glory. That is a lot of great humbleness. That is a very uh, makes him very very special and so easy to work with. But what's also great about Shane is he reaches, he reaches, he teaches, and he, he every single body else on our team. So from our, our dialers, our um, lead generation team, he coaches them and he mentors them. Um, from our loan officer assistants that have become now production partners and team production partners, he coaches, teaches, mentors them. He's been such a, such a beacon of light that yesterday I've got five other loan officers that do about 25 million or so each in the branch, and he was teaching them about how to cast a vision. So. If you can successfully reduplicate yourself, I guarantee you, Shane makes me look ten times better than better than I sh how I should look. But um, and that's where I think the biggest key of reduplication, which allows you to scale your mortgage business, that I think a lot of mortgage loan officers are missing out on. Cool. I think one of the things that I'd like to point out, which was really key, and I wrote it down was his opportunity is not your responsibility. Um, that is huge. Uh, and I don't know anybody, I've interviewed several people to come to the team and one of the things I always look for, I don't look for somebody who is m money driven. It's just not, it's not my thing. You can't be money driven and have, you can be money oriented, but not money driven because then you make, I feel you make the wrong mistakes for me, at least my group. But I find a lot of people that when they interview with me, they're trying to interview me and why they should work for me. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not how it works. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a platform and it's not my responsibility to, I'm going to make sure that you're successful, but it's not my responsibility to give you, I'm going to give you the opportunities, but you've got to be the one that's successful. And I think, I don't know about anybody else, but that's where I struggle the most with having somebody come up and move up the ranks is a lot of times they, I want to uh, succeed the successor um, and um, they don't understand the hard work that we've put into it to get you to this place. So how do you address that? Or do you, it sounds like you guys don't even have that 
that at all. I mean, you guys are in, coming in with a humble attitude and work on wanting to work for free for 90 days. Wow. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would definitely say what's, what's also great about that is, um, and thank you for saying that. It took me a long time to understand that there, there are opportunities, there are responsibility. I used to be everybody's battery and everybody would get energy from me. Uh, but it was so, always so funny when it was five o'clock and they were getting to go home. I was there until nine, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, not anymore. I mean, the, it, it, Shane's response, opportunity is his responsibility. But we talk about that from day one in the interview process. We talk about we'll give you the mentorship and the coaching to provide you the opportunity to be entrepreneurial and build your own business that attracts a certain level of person like Shane and like Christopher, like Brandon, like David, the rest of people on my team, that it, um, it, it, it's, it's something that's set. The tone is set and the culture is repeated on a weekly basis. I mean, plus it's, it's a matter of coming from, you know, uh, an abundance mindset versus a, a scarcity mindset. Right. I mean, if anyone's on this call and in this industry and, and if you're near capacity or, or you need to get a, a loan officer assistant or an added team, I mean, we get paid well to do what we do. Right. And when it gets to the point of, of, you know, you go through and, and, uh, for example, we have a builder account opportunity that, that came up and, and frankly, I did not have capacity to, to service those buyers and those, those leads as I needed to. So, um, our, team production uh, partner, um, I, I launched her assistant on the team, Brandon. I said, hey, Brandon, do you want an opportunity to close an extra 15 deals this year and, and you'll get paid like normal on it? And uh, he said, heck yeah, you know, that's awesome. So uh, just coming from a place of abundance and offering, you know, those opportunities to other people on the team, I think is huge. I love that. Um, so if you were to say one thing that you guys do well is would it say would your communicate i mean communication is key do you guys communicate very well do you meet on a regular basis like what how do tell me a little bit about your structure on how you guys meet um and how you address when an adversity comes in or a conflict comes in we're def we definitely meet on a weekly basis we do something called a 411 every tuesday afternoon for 30 minutes shane brings in his scorecard tells me how many leads he got for that week, how many high trust interviews he did for that week, how many uh, offer outs, how many lock calls, how many agent one-on-ones he did for that week. So I keep him accountable to numbers. But when I really saw Shane blossom over the years is just candidly me being brave enough to be honest with him. You know, before I used to not try not to hurt his feelings and before like coddle him in a way, but you know, our secret weapon today is we're a crazy transparent team. We're publicly accountable to each teammate on the, on the team. And I, as the leader of the team, is just as accountable as a loan officer assistant on the team. Like, I don't get special treatment just because my name is on door. And, sh and, that, and that's the culture that just goes to the team as, as transparency. Right, Shane? Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, we don't really – uh, I make fun of Wally all the time and oh, there's no such thing as secrets <laughs> with Wally. Um, that just doesn't exist. So, uh, for better, for worse, right? No, I love it. Uh, and, and no one, no one has to wonder about where we stand with, whether it's anybody in, in leadership on the team or, you know, anybody else on the entire team, you know, in our, in our 15, 16 person team. Right. So, um, so from that, I mean, just doing those four one ones has been huge because it, it sets, it lets Wally know what my trajectory is, what's my battery, my capacity. And it makes sure that that it reaffirms to me that I'm staying on track to keep Wally. Uh, you know, I want to. At the end of the day, I want Wally to be happy with me and my results. Because if he's not happy with my results, then you know I'm going to be out looking for another job, right? So at the end of the day, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm keeping him happy and and uh, and performing to his expectations as well. Plus, on the right track for my growth and the team's growth. Love it. One last question for you guys. Do you guys do use an outside coaching source? Are you guys core? Are you, do you have a coach or a coach that coaches you or you uh, manage your coaching between yourselves? Uh, Todd Duncan coached me for years and uh, he's been a phenomenal friend, a phenomenal mentor, and he's poured so much into me. What was super great about what Todd taught me over the years is I came, I came to the office and I 
every sales mastery I went to, every mortgage boot camp I went to, I came and I shared all of that with Shane and we dug down deep. And so Sean, not Sean, uh, Shane's received Todd Duncan's coaching just as, uh, just uh, like from me, but it came like it came from Todd. Um, but then uh, not in core. Uh, no, it's funny. Like I'm a very, um, OCD stringent specific person. People think you'd be great. I, I, I would be the core, but I'm not, I, I don't know much about the core to be honest with you. But, um, the, uh, there's a lot of Keller Williams training that we've done over the years from recruit select to train, lead, motivate, to bold, um, to ignite that we've done that Shane and I have done together. So we go to seminars and learn. We have a, a weekly book club together. We read a book a week together and then we mastermind on it. Um, but also as of today, what's super cool is fairways that we work for and fairways got a coaching company called ignite. Um, what's great about that, Sarah Middleton is my personal coach and, and with Ignite, they've got so many different tools that, uh, tools that break down like one that Shane and I were going, going at and see if I can go through that, but a chart, but what, what he, he, he had, I had it in my office and he had a 411 Wednesday, he was trying to take it with him. I said, you can't take that with you. That, that stays in here. And he, he distracted me to where he took a picture of it on his phone to take it with him. And so he's, um, he's, uh, he's very, very, very learning based person for sure. I love it. I'm going to use one of Dave, uh, Dave's things. Boom. Let's talk about the, the two things that really came out of this, which is number one, you know, making sure that they, you're not responsible for his opportunity. Your, his opportunity is not your responsibility. Or did I say that right? The opportunity. And then the second thing is that you guys meet on a daily basis. Um, you're transparent with each other. There's no drama. And number three, which I think is really important is, you know, you, well, you got your foundation from Todd Duncan and coaching. You invested in yourself. One of the things that I run into a lot when I talk to people who will call me after calls and say, you know, how do you, how do you get to where you are? And I'm, uh, number one, I give back a lot. Um, and that's just how, that's where I get my feel good. And the other is I invest in myself um, and I invest in coaching and I do private coaching and I listen to the Darren Hardy stuff and I participate in the Darren Hardy stuff. For me, that's what I need to be successful because I am OCD as well. And unfortunately, I'm the shiny object girl too. So like if I'm not focused on something and something comes over here, I'm going to go over here and forget everything that I'm doing here. So I'm actually a terrible multitasker now. I used to pride myself in that, but I'm terrible at it now. And I'm okay with saying that. But I love that you guys are your true partnership, um, which is incredible. But you're also a partnership where the leader knows who that is. Um, some of the mistakes I'll share that I've made, which is I've made my group such a equal equal partners, um, and it's it we're we're it's, it's destroying my team right now. So I have to make some changes, which is going to be painful for me. But in the long run, it's going to be it should have been what I did before. I'm I'm learning that I can't be the millennial. I can't be everybody's best friend. I, I have to be a leader. And leading sometimes mean, means making some tougher decisions or being able to go like you did to Shane and say, hey, I need to be transparent with you. This is what you need to change. And being okay and having a, a safe environment to do that. And so congratulations, you guys. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to grow your team, the biggest thing, one of my favorite questions to ask Shane is, hey, do I have your permission to be transparent with you right now? Uh, my second favorite question to ask Shane, hey, are you open to coaching on A, B, and C topic? Those two key determiners there let me know how hard and how far and, and how much pressure I can push in, on him on that topic. If he says no to either one of those, I step back and I wait for my time. Um, today, early in my career, and Shane will test this, I, was to, I, I used to treat everything with a hammer. <laughs> And uh, Shane learned that um, don't watch my approach, listen to the words that I'm trying to say, but w with a vein popping in my neck. Um, but it, what is, we're all definitely on the same team. I, 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 I take a bullet for the guy. Yeah, and I mean, part of that too is for, you know, 
for me on the other side of that is to be brave enough to say uh, the majority of the time I've seen it say, yes, I'm coachable. Yes, I'm open to it. Please tell me and, and let me listen. Uh, but I also need to be brave enough to say, hey, not now. I'm not really in the place and the mindset to really hear this, uh, but also figure out a way. How can I have myself be self-accountable, maybe reapproach him and definitely reapproach him you know, another time whenever I am open to that and whenever I'm in a place to, to receive him. I love that. My my special word is if Clarice woke up, don't talk to me. <laughs> Clarice, I'm a big horror flick girl, so Clarice from um, the Sounds of the Lambs, but it's a big joke between my current boss and I, and he's, a, he's becoming a great mentor for me and really helping me um, see some of the things that I was missing along with the coaching. My coach is Cindy Ertman, so um, she helped soften my edges because I too was a hammer, um, and I'm, I'm really a soft little mushy thing inside, but... <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, well, let's move to the next thing, which is let's talk about, you know, a lot of people, you know, we're, we're running into the markets getting hot, at least here in Southern California. We are picking up, picking up, but we still have a lack of inventory. So what the challenge that we're running into is we've got rate shoppers, everybody going to bankrate.com or, you know, walking into their Wells branch or whatever. You know, how, how, are, how are you guys dealing with that in the Texas market? Are you guys having the same issues that we are here in Southern California, or at least for me? Uh, yeah, absolutely. In Dallas, for sure. And, and it, when, when someone tells me, you know, the rate's the most important thing that like we talked about on the break, when a client says, yeah, what's your rate? They're just geared and to built to, to, to ask that question. You've got to help educate them on other values that in a mortgage that allows them to have bigger opportunity of wealth. And, um, so we kind of position ourselves to where the rate conversation is not really, a, it becomes a non-issue to, for like 85, 90% of our clients. Uh, there's that 10, 15% that rates is still a big deal no matter what. Yeah, I can say it. I have the best script in the world. Rates still the most important thing to them. But the other 80, 80, 85% that we focus on, we position ourselves that we do the TBD underwrite before a client finds a home, not after a client finds a home. So when Shane and I go make offers and the, our whole team, we go make an offer, the offers are usually without financing contingency. So financing con contingency is removed. Then also from there, the uh, it's usually a 10 or 15 day close, beginning to end, 10 or 15 day close, um, which you can go find a lender online that is a half a point less than me, but they're needing 30, 45 days. So those clients are rate shoppers, but they don't really get serious about rate shopping rates until they go under contract. Well, we've positioned the contracts where it's like checkmate. Sure, you want to go to A, B, and C bank rate lender on, online or Keller Mortgage or whatever, you're going to look at a 30, 45 day closing. You're going to miss your closing day by 15 to 20 days. You're going to lose your earnest money. You're going to lose your option money, inspection, appraisal, and on top of that, you're going to lose the house just for getting a, a low, a lower rate. Um, so we beat the rate shopping question with speed that allows us to separate ourselves from the pack and play a different game than what most loan officers play. Right, Shane? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I think the biggest thing there is in the market over here, at least in Dallas, is, I mean, we consistently see a minimum of 10 offers on every single house. Uh, and that's a minimum. I mean, I had one, one buyer the other day that, that had uh, talked to the, the buyer's agent, or I'm sorry, the listing agent that was selling the house, and she had over 30 offers on the house. I mean, how can you even look at 30 offers, right? So, so our job, I feel our job is not just to do the loan. It's provide a, a fantastic experience to the buyer before closing, during closing, and after closing. Uh, but all that is a mute point if we can't get that offer accepted and get them in the house, right? So. Uh, that's that's why we did the the, the CLA pro the conditional loan approval process, the TBD uh, front underwriting process, is to make sure that they're winning the house. And um, at the end of the day, I mean, the, the script that I tell buyers is, okay, that's great. You can get a half percent lower rate uh, with with four points online. That, okay, we've already discussed how that's kind of silly, right? But if you still want to do that, um, I can tell you I can get you a one percent rate on the mortgage. But if you're going to keep losing offer after offer, it doesn't matter what rate I can give you if it's not gonna seal the deal, right? So um, that provides a lot of cloud. And I think people really resonate that with, with that in this market because 
they're sick of losing out every single offer. And, and Shane, why don't you talk a little bit about the listing agent call in the beginning and the client been before that, the client commitment call to position you that candidly you can, you and I both can lock clients via text if we wanted to. So we'll talk, let's talk about the commitment call to the client and let's talk about the, the uh, listing agent call. Yeah. So what, what we found, I mean, we had this great idea to do the upfront underwriting process back, you know, a couple of years ago, we started doing that and it was this great value proposition, right? But what we found and the buyers were really excited about it, but what we found with these listing agents that had these 30 offers or, you know, some ridiculous amount, I mean, we're, they're human, right? They can't see the offer. They can't see all the offers. They don't see the nitty gritty of the details. They probably don't even look at my lender letter through all the, the slew of offers, right? So what we started doing is we started implementing uh, something we call a listing agent call. So we reach out to the listing agent and the call goes something along the lines of, hey, you know, this is Shane with Team Wall and Fairway Mortgage. You'll notice that our offer looks a little bit different from everybody else's. It's not just a pre-qualification or pre-approval. It's actually an upfront conditionally uh, approved uh, letter from an underwriting. So what we've done is we've weighed the financing contingency. We're essentially a cash buyer. We just need a title work and appraisal and we'll get you closed. So. You know, with, with that in mind, what else is important to you and your seller? How else can we structure this in a, in a more advantageous way to make it an easy decision for you? And then I just stop and I listen. And they tell me literally how to win with win the offer. And they tell me there's other offers, your offers. They probably tell me too much, honestly. Um, but, it, but it gives us, um, it adds a lot of value to the buyer's agent and referral partners, and they love it. And that's a huge, probably the biggest selling point that we have. And it's also a big selling point to the buyer because how committed are they going to be to us after we add that much value to them, right? So uh, we, we do this call and, and uh, we, we get all, we're the secret ninja, the secret spy over for this buyer. And what we then found next was that these buyers, we we're adding all this value and, um, you know, hey, Shane, thank you so much for, for getting this offer. We're really appreciative for that. You, know, you literally run the deal for us, but uh, what we're still going to go back to quick in loans and get half a percent lower rate. So that's best for my family. So I'm sure you can appreciate that. It's like, uh, well, I mean, what am I supposed to say there? Right? So what we started doing is, uh, we started doing something called a buyer commitment call before we make the listing agent call. Right? So the timeline is we do upfront TBD underwriting to be determined underwriting upfront. Um, we find out that the, the buyer is making an offer on the property from the buyer's agent. We, we coach them and train them to, to let us know ahead of time. So they inform us as soon as the offer goes out and then I call the buyer and I do the commitment call. And basically that commitment call, uh, it goes something along the lines of, um, Hey Wally, I know uh, you've allowed us to do all the work up front. Are you nervous or excited? Um, it's really, really excited to help you out with this. And, and as you know, we're really grateful for, you know, allowing us to do that upfront underwriting process there. And uh, the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the listing agent and make lots of promises about the proactive communication, everything we're going to do. And uh, before I make all those promises, I want to make sure that you and I are good to go and uh, that, that you're fully committed to me uh, so I can fulfill those promises to that agent. So do you have any concerns about us moving forward together, uh, any of the terms or anything that we need to discuss beforehand? And 95% of the time, the answer is no, Shane, you've been great. Your team has been awesome. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you for doing that. And uh, the 5% of the time, the rate shopping, and we'll talk it out and either we come to a, a you know an agreement and, and I take that over to, to see if we can match another rate that they've offered or I wish them the best of luck and, and I don't do the call. And I call the, the buyer's agent and I explain that to him in a way that's coming from you know a place of integrity versus a place of you know uh, animosity for it, right? And it's it's very welcoming from them as well. So let's just say you do all that and you do a great job there and you crush it. The contract comes in, then what if you still get that? Hey, well, Hey Shane, I, you know, I, yeah, I committed to you. Thanks for winning me the house. Um, but Hey, we're still going to go to A, B and C mortgage. Well, I, I could really appreciate that, man. I know you just want to do what's best for your family. So uh, before I called uh, the realtor on this house, I know I let you know that I was going to make a lot of promises to the listing agent, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, for sure. So I did that. I mean, we are on the same page and, and I totally understand you're wanting to do what's best for your family. Um, but here's the thing. I, I called the listing agent and I let them know that we were going to do proactive communication. That we were a local lender, all the work we've done up front. And, um, and I also promised them that if there are any hurdles or anything that popped up, that, uh, that I would let them know. So 
um, you know, I will have to give them a call and let them know that that we will, you know, in respect respecting your wishes and allowing you to move forward with another lender on there. Um, my only concern there is, you know, a couple things. You know, we're still doing the inspection period, and and your realtor uh, Joe does a really great job during inspections and negotiating those for you. Um, but how how motivated do you think they're going to be to work with you if you're working with some other lender that they don't know from Adam and um, you know, I made a lot of promises. That's why they actually selected your offer. So uh, I'd hate him for, you know, something to fall out there, you know, to not get the best deal on the house because of that. Yeah. And when you, when you sat at the bar, I asked the bar and say, Hey, you know what, I, I just thank you so much. If anything changes, please let us know. Our next phone call is to the buyer's agent and explain the situation to the buyer's agent. Then we use the buyer's agent as a raving fan to go back to that bar where and get them back on track. So, I mean, we rarely lose loans to rate shoppers because we, we set up from the TBD process up front. They've given us all their documentation. We would help them win the offer. We get their commitment again. Then we utilize the sources around us in the equation to help cross sell us at no matter what the process is. So any, uh, any feedback there, Michelle? Sorry, I'm not used to using my computer. I'm used to having my head set on. Um, yes, I think that's amazing. Um, one of the things I like, and um, I don't do when, when and I'm, I'm learning from you, so I, I'm, I'm glad I think it's recorded. So I don't make the phone call to the listing agent after, um, if let's say that somebody leaves me, I'll actually call the buyer, um, buyer's agent, and I'll let them know I need to resend my pre-approval because, and I tell the client, listen, this is this is nothing personal, but my pre-approval, when people see my pre-approval, they know that you're closing. You know, we have done the to be determined and I have given them a 15 day guarantee on closing and said, we're gonna do all your contingencies within this period. I said, this is, you, you, I, you need to know that this could possibly jeopardize your earnest money deposit, everything, because now you need to make sure this new lender is gonna be able to commit to you. And I'll go, are you sure? And I'll go over, the, I'll say, what rate are they giving you? Um, that's so great that you want to leave after the relationship that we have. And if a second 8%, I'll usually counsel them and say, you realize that's $12 or whatever it is. Is that really worth it for you? I try to put it back on them. And I'm also very gracious. And I'm, I'm one of those that will say, hey, would you like me to package up the file? I'll be happy to send it over to them. Because I always want to leave on a good note. And I also take the initiative. I do two more calls to the client. One about five days after they've left me to make sure everything's going okay. And then if I know the contract's closing on the 31st, I still call them a week after they close and congratulate them on their closing. I am not a sore loser. Um, I know that most of the time when I make those phone calls, you'd be surprised. Oh my gosh, I should have stayed with you. I can't believe how awful this experience was. Um, I promise the next time I'll never do this. It wasn't worth the extra quarter I got or whatever it may be. And so I do take it and I do take those hangups sometimes, you know, where the guy goes, don't ever call me again. And I'll go, okay, great. But I don't want to work with people like that. Um, so, and I typically don't get to that, but I'll give you a great example. This week I had a client pre-approve them. Um, it was a very fast pre-approval. They needed a 21 day guarantee. Um, and I did this as a favor for my realtor because they, I mean, they basically sent me the paperwork. We were on the phone pre-approving them. Uh, the client's credit came in lower. Um, so we didn't address rate or anything at the time. So when I, when she went to contract, I said, you know, hi, Emma, I'll use the name Emma. We're ready to lock in your rate. You know, congratulations on your offer being accepted. I'm so glad that I was able to be of service to you and help you be able to get this offer accepted. Um, right now, this is where rates are. And she goes, well, gosh, you know, my Wells Fargo guy said my rate is 4. You know, 3, 4%. And I'll say, oh my gosh, that, that's a fantastic rate. Um, I, I certainly can't compete with that. If that's what they can get you, you know, let me know and I'll package up your file to them. Well, she went to Wells Fargo and then turns out the Wells Fargo didn't ask anything because they realized it was a $1.1 million purchase. They assumed it was jumbo, quoted her on a jumbo rate and didn't realize she was you know, spending $700,000 down, putting it back into conforming and they no longer could offer that rate. So the client came back to me, but she, you know, the agent said, you know, she's really worried because she thinks that you might be upset. And I'm like, so I have to look at myself when I hear that and go, Josh, what did I portray on that message that would make the client uncomfortable coming back to me. So I do a lot of that, but bottom line, we came back, the client came back and we're closing her loan. So um, 
it's really important to do for me to do not only the follow through, but also make sure that when you're doing like Wally and what Shane do, which is so important, I am calling the listing agent on your behalf. I love that you guys make have that commitment call before you do that. I I want to. I hope I you know mine. I'm going to copy that because I think it's so killer that you do that because it makes them commit, makes them understand this is value. It's not about rate. It's not, it's about the value. And am I going to close? Have I done everything? I read this great book and it was. It was when, it, when a client comes back to you and says anything, your, your first, I used to get upset when people would question me or question my integrity or, you know, it was the whole chip on my shoulder thing. And I'm, I'm better now. I lower my tempo one lower below them and I'll ask them, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Is there something that I didn't deliver? Is there something that I didn't do right? Is there something that was on my pre approval ever that was incorrect? And I put it back on them. Um, and that has been a great, learning tool this year and doing the commitment oh, call is so bang boom whatever Dave Savage would say <laughs> boom great <laughs> yeah I mean I think I think that's awesome and and I miss Dave um but you did, you're doing a great job taking this place and thank you so much for leading this because when we're it's I'm terrified of computers and uh I couldn't do what you're doing um that's why I've changed so, but the biggest thing is that commitment call. I mean, I think I want to say, Shane, that had to be back in like 2015-ish. I was at a production trip in Miami and we made a listening agent call and then Shane calls me up and says, hey, we lost a deal. And I, I, I bring a hammer to the equation. I'm, I'm so just livid. And uh, we came back and, you know, we keep focusing on, which you sound like you're definitely doing the same thing stopping doing the best that we can do and focusing on doing it the best way it can be done. There's so many different tweaks you can make in a process that I, a 20 year veteran versus Shane, a four year veteran, I can step out of the process. He manages the client, the realtor operations for that loan. And the product that's delivered to the client is the same product as if it was me doing and that's what he meant earlier about by reduplicating what what made me special at what i did or and it's just habits that i've learned over the years and you learn what to do and not to do and you just if you create a business model that is surrounded around best practices and you have the discipline to execute that business model you'll be uber successful agreed so Shane, let's do another, I'm going to put you on the spot. Let's do another scripting for, for the group. Um, on the first initial intake call, somebody calls in, ring, ring, um, and I'm calling you, Shane. So would you mind doing a little role playing with me for a second? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. Ring, ring, I'm calling you. Hello? Hi, um, is Shane there? Yeah, this is Shane. Hi Shane, I was referred by Kelly Smith um, and I want to get pre-approved for a home loan. Oh great, um, and I'm so sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, my name is Michelle and my last name is Town. Oh Michelle, thank you so much for reaching out. I mean Kelly's an absolute rock star. We work with her all the time and she's definitely one of my favorites. She's a great negotiator and she's a, just an absolute rock star. So kudos to you there first of all. Fantastic. Well, um, you know, I've been searching on this bank rate thing and I'm, I'm you know, I've been seeing some rates like about 3.875. Can you tell me what your rate is? Yeah. So there's actually about 20 different factors that go into calculating rates, something called a loan level pricing adjustment. So um, I would love to, to tell you exactly what that looks like. Um, really the first step that I have, do you have internet access in front of you right now? I do. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'd love to run through some options and actually I do uh, really need to we'll call it a total cost analysis. So we'll actually compare a couple of different loan strategies based off your specific short and long-term goals. So um, really the first step that I have is, is a quick 15 minute questionnaire on my website that I'll have you knock out. What that'll do is that'll give me all the information I need to run your specific numbers on there. So then that way I can uh, just better serve you and, and uh, get to know your goals better there. Well, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, I just kind of wanted to know, like, what my payment was going to be, what my interest rate was going to be, you know, and I know I'm a perfect borrower because my credit karma says I have an 800 credit score. Oh, that's um, awesome. So. That's great. I use credit karma, too. It's such a great tool, right? It's so accurate. And, uh, yes, yeah, so I, I'd definitely love to help you with that. And um, so here's the thing, though, uh, Michelle, is 
you know, with those 20 different factors that go into calculating all the terms for the loan and eligibility for the loan, you clearly are very well qualified, right? So that's definitely not a concern. Uh, but going through and calculating all the other, you know, 18, 19 factors to calculate your specific loan terms, I want to make sure that I'm not doing you a disservice to just simply guess those numbers for you because at the end of the day, this is the biggest purchase of your life. And I want to make sure, I feel I owe it to you to at least take, you know, an hour of my day for you taking 15 minutes of your time to calculate those numbers for you so I can present those in the best way possible. Okay, well, tell me what I need to do. Okay, great. I'll send you a text message with our website and, and uh, fill out that questionnaire. And um, what I can do is, is do we have 15 minutes this afternoon to fill that out? And yeah, I mean, if you can take 15 minutes to fill that out this afternoon, uh, what I'll do is, uh, are you free maybe at two o'clock uh, and I can give you a call after I run those numbers for you? Yeah, absolutely. That would be fantastic. Okay. Great. I'll shoot you that text and circle back to you too. I love that. So, so first, I love that you. I love how you answered the credit karma part of it because that's my favorite thing. <laughs> my credit karma says I'm an 800. I, I always tell people I love that commercial. I said, I, I said, will you put your feet on my desk and tell me my credit is 800? And I said, and, I, and then I come back and say, well, it's not quite 800. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was great. And I, I want everybody to pay attention. I kept going back to rate. I kept going, well, what's my rate? Well, I don't know if I want to do this or I don't want to do that. And Shane was really good at putting it back on me and, but not putting it back on me. He was like, you know, listen, you deserve more of my time than just a rate question. So that is great. Um, any comments, Wally? I'm um, just a proud papa. Um, and if he would have gone further with him, he would have done the, the three-part tie down. So the way that we're, we tie down clients is, okay, great. So you fill out the application. Great. Do you have time to do it in the next 15 minutes? Okay, awesome. So I'm looking at my calendar right here. I see I've got an appointment open at two o'clock. Well, I'm going to send you a calendar invite for that two o'clock appointment for me to specifically call you back at that time. Is that good with you? So now he's got an appointment set with you. Then he repeats that again twice before he gets off the call. He makes sure that you, you know, you've committed to getting it done in the next 15 minutes and that you're committed to accepting the calendar invite. Sorry, I have a, my dogs are getting their treatments right now, so my apologies. <laughs> Got a little distracted. No, no, you're good. You're good. So the biggest thing is, again, you can structure steps in the call to allow you to have an easier high trust interview. Then we structure steps in the high trust interview to have an easier commitment call. In the commitment call, we structure steps to have an easier lock call. And it's like every piece of our model builds on the next step and the next step and the next step that just makes it easy at the end. Yeah, and if, if you would have kept going some more, Michelle, on, on the specific rate that you saw in bank rate, then I would have said, you know what, I, I, I guarantee I can find some kind of loan strategy to get you to that, that option for you. Um, what I'll do, uh, just like I promised, I'm going to spend about an hour running through those numbers to create that cost analysis for you. I'm going to make sure to include those numbers on that one of those strategies that I include for you. So while you're filling out that application, uh, that questionnaire, I'll go ahead and get a head start running those. And then for our two o'clock appointment, we'll actually go through and review that together to make sure I'm serving you the way you want to be served. No, that's great. Do you actually go to bank rate and plug that rate in? So like if somebody sees a 3.625 15-year fix, do you actually plug it in with a cost? What would it cost you or how do you do that? Yeah, for sure. So uh, typically I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, you know, when, when did you see that? Uh, I'll pull it up with them on the phone. And typically, I mean, you know, we all get our money from the same place, right? I mean, there's, if there's a 1% difference in rate, something's wrong. It's a, it's not really a 30 year, it's a 15 year, or there's points included. If I look at the APR, it's a lot higher, right? So if I go on there and look, I'll specifically point out that, you know, hey, oh, it looks like that's a really great rate. That is a 15 year. I, I apologize, Michelle, I thought you mentioned you were looking at a 30 year. I'd love to run you some 15 year options and strategies as well. I love that. That's really, that's really, you're a great script. I love that. High trust interview. <laughs> that, guys? High trust interview. What's also great was when, when Shane, Shane and I go to bankrate.com, we go through them and like we point out, hey, this rate, yeah, it's a half point less, but you're paying a point or you're paying two points to get there. Did anybody explain that to you? No, I just looked on the website. Okay. So we think about like a, a break even point on your investment of your money. This is how long it'll take you to break even on paying a point or break even to paying two points. So I, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that because you know what? 
refinances will happen. You'll sell a house five, seven years from now. And um, a lot of it, again, what I said in the beginning of the call, is education. If you're brave enough to educate your borrowers, um, you'll capture more business. But you've got to be brave enough to educate your borrowers instead of this. Earlier in my career, I was very guilty of it. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry I lost the deal. I, I, let me know if anything happens. And that was the end of the conversation. But you've got to, you, they put up a wall, then you got to tear down that wall. Then you, then you win, or you tear down the next wall, then tear down the next wall. And you just, you're just persistent. That's fantastic. Okay, so Wally, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. So let's say you're, you've got your borrower. Um, I'm going to, this is today was all about doing some live stuff for, for our, our mortgage coach community. You've got a borrower, you've done your total cost analysis, you did it a month ago. We're in a rising interest rate environment. You now get ready to go to contracts. You've had your commitment call with them. They, the, their, their 15 day guaranteed close. You've got a 21 day close. So, you know, most of the people on bank rate aren't going to be able to compete with that time frame. Now the rate's gone up a quarter percent. Tell me how, what's, show me what that conversation looks like. Well, part of our model is every single Monday we reach out to clients that are either pre-qualified CLA approval or TBD approval that we have in our pipeline. No ifs, ands, or buts. And I get a report, actually the whole team gets a report to tell all of us if Shane made his Monday calls. Uh, that comes to our team email address. Or if I made my Monday calls and we're publicly accountable to each other. At that Monday call every single week, you're updating the client what's going on with interest rates. So it won't come to a shock or surprise. And the second part of the commitment call, once the offer is going out, before before we make a listing agent call, we ask the borrowers, like I mentioned to you last week, rates have gone up a quarter point. Would you like me to update your mortgage, your total cost analysis for you to kind of show you show that because it's you've got the mobile app, so it's at, at your fingertips. So it's, we we address those if it's a 30 days their pre-qualification process. You know, I've addressed that four times with them every single Monday on the call. Then we bring it up again before the commitment call. And, that, and that's one thing that oh, I said earlier about that bravery. You, you've got to be brave to put your rate out there. You've got to be brave to put yourself out there with the clients. And I, so many loan officers, unfortunately, avoid the interest rate question, avoid the interest rate topic, and just beat around the bush. The more direct you are, the more a, a client will respect you. I like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the other thing that I've really implemented there is, um, you know, a lot of people don't know, I mean, rate watch is a huge, huge, huge benefit. And there was a while where, I mean, when we saw what quarter percent jumps in rates a few months ago, uh, I mean, that's, that's a difficult conversation when you, you're already talking to someone where, you know, maybe I originally got them pre-qualified six months ago, uh, you know, and, and they were seeing rates below four. And now all of a sudden, you know, I increased on the last Monday call that I had within the weekly call, I increased it above that 4% rate. And now we're like mid, mid high fours, right? So they're, they're freaking out thinking I'm price gouging them or doing some kind of switch, switch and bait kind of thing. Um, so literally I'll take a screenshot of the rate watch app and I'll show it to them and, uh, and I'll explain, you know, look, this is how mortgage backed securities work. See this giant dip. See how it, there's a huge drop here? That's bad. That means that rates went up. So I'll actually educate them on that. I mean, it's it's uh, with graphs and things, and that's that's why I love the TCA. I mean, graphs just add um, you know uh, transparency in my in my opinion. You know, it adds confidence in the buyer's eyes. So when it comes to something like a huge rate increase, if I can show them another graph like a mortgage, like an MBS move in or something like that, live in the market. One, it shows that I'm watching the market and I'm knowledgeable and I care. And two, I mean, it's hard to argue from real time numbers on there, right? So um, that's been hugely helpful for me in the market recently. Michelle, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me yes, now? there you go. What are you saying? Okay. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, <laughs> Last um, last week we did a the script of Palooza. We did a I did a cost of waiting um, mortgage coach analysis as well as a uh, cost of waiting script, and um, it actually is email blasting. We did a we did a test email blast out to 20 people just to see what our open rate was, and I, it's a random 20 people, um, and every all 20 of them opened it. All 20 of them commented on it. It was pretty interesting. 
um, when you put it into dollars and cents and, you know, I don't want to scare people into buying houses, but I also want them to understand. And what I tell my team is, you know, our job is to educate them on what's going on, not to, we're going to give them data. We can't hide the data. It's there. We can't hide that interest rates went up. So I love that you guys do a Monday call. I have mine as a calendar every two weeks, every pre-approval person gets a call for me. And I ask them if they want an update on the total cost analysis or how the shopping's going. Um, I like the Monday calls. I just don't have the bandwidth to do that right now. Um, what else do you think that you guys do that is just incredible that some of our mortgage coach community here can learn from? Um, Shane, you want to run with that one? So, I mean, what, what's the biggest challenge that I can address, Michelle, that you're kind of seeing? Uh, is it is it rate shopping? Is it, uh, I mean, what, what do you think it is? Well, I think I, I, I don't consider rate shopping. I mean, people are going to rate shop whether we have 100 properties on the market or five. Um, they're just going to always do that. What about um, clients calling and saying, um, I don't have any down payment or um, I think I should say I should wait and save. Um, that's probably my number one when I'm talking to clients and they look at the, you know, the total cost analysis and they go, wow, uh, that, that payment's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be because they're, you know, they're unrealistic in their expectations. Anyway, I think I'm going to save 50, I'm going to save $50,000. How would you, I know how I would address that, but how would you address that? Yeah. So, I mean, typically I'm not sure if, if everybody knows what DISC is, right? D-I-S-C. So uh, basically there's, there's three main types of people. There's super social people, high eyes, inner, inner influence. There's high D's that are uh, very uh, direct and, and they're just drivers, right? And then there's typically SC's, which is about 80% of the population are more of the SC type. So they're gonna be more engineer type, uh, you know, mindset, more numbers oriented. So the majority of people that I've found when kind of going back and looking at the people that I maybe have lost because I did a poor job at, at doing the cost of waiting conversation with them, um, they were typically the SC mindset. So what I've found is the more numbers and the more data and the more analytics I can get them to support how that's just a silly decision. I mean, that's just a poor, this is, if you're truly doing this for the best economical outcome and what's best for your family and, and dollar sense wise, um, it's, it, it's seriously in your best interest. I want to shake them sometimes, right? And say like, you're not helping yourself. So any data that I can give them, um, conversation I just recently had with the buyer was, uh, Hey, you know, I've been working with you for a year and a half. You've been mentioning that you want to save up some money and uh, put more money down. And, and I can totally respect that. I actually did a cost of waiting analysis for you about, uh, nine months ago. And you said that, that was really helpful, but we still haven't acted on that yet. We're still, we're still not moving on that house yet. So, um, by the way, I just went ahead and updated that, that cost of waiting analysis for future projections. And I'll go ahead and put in the most recent Fannie Mae uh, interest rate uh, report that shows rates are going to jump another half percent by the end of the year. So literally, this is a reputable, you know, government agency that's projecting rates are going to go up half percent. I know that I'm probably dealing with an SC engineer analytical mindset, and they're going to love and eat up the reports. It, it shows credibility there, right? So, uh, and I'll show them, look, you, you've already, you're already paying an extra 12%. I'll, I'll literally show them the cost analysis, the total cost analysis to say, look, you're paying 12% more today than you were nine months ago. Why are you gonna wait another six, six to 12 months to pay another 12%? It's 25%, 24%, right? Um, so typically by then, uh, you know, just short of me showing up to their house and shaking them and say, buy a house, it's, it's best for you. Um, that's the best way I can really explain to them that, you know, with, with credibility and, and specific numbers there to help. I love it. Okay, we're wrapping up right now. So, um, Wally, what's your big win of this week? The big win, like you had, a, there's always a big win of the week. What's your big win of the week? Uh, my newest hire. So I've hired a business development manager for the branch. And what's super duper cool is Shane's leveraged me a lot on doing loans with the team, and so is the team. Then the next, then I've got a, a lead generation manager who's leveraged me a lot. So I've delegated, I broke, broke down, I did it five categories really well, and that 20%, I found somebody do 20%, 20%. And the last remaining one was business development. And what's super cool about this is my world was stretched so much that now Shane is somebody that helps him work on retention of staying in front of our, our team wall of realtors 
our, our, he also helped help me recruit loan officers to the branch. We just signed on a, a, a local MSA right across the parking lot from us. And he's connecting those loan officers with those agents through. So, I mean, we'll, we'll end up at 150 million this year and we've got our eyes on 300 million next year. He was, he's a really big empire expander. Uh, he came from the title world. He was the number one um, title business development manager for all companies uh, in, in our city, Plano. And uh, he joined he joined Fairway, joined our world, and he's going to help us grow. I love it. I love it. Shane, what's your big win of the week? Um, can I cheat and give you a quick, one quick small one and then one bigger sure. one? Okay, sure. cool. Uh, $600,000 buyer. Uh, been working with them, past client of ours, been working with them for about three months and uh, was rate shopping, found out about a contract 15 days after it executed. Yes, Wally, I made my weekly calls. He just didn't answer uh, and uh, got him back in the game. He's actually paying an extra $200 in closing costs, uh, but just due to persistence and customer service and value, um, he's back in the game with us. So little wins like that are always helpful, right? Um, biggest thing I think though is, is, uh, as a team, we've read a book called traction and, uh, we've read it, we've read it once as a team, we're reading it a second time as a team. I'm personally reading it the fourth time. And, uh, we officially went out there and, and, uh, announced and committed all to each other that awesome book, by the way. Um, uh, basically it talks about how to, uh, get traction on your business moving forward, grow, uh, and it's more of a leadership, uh, it's more for, for specifically for leadership to work together and work smarter. So we're doing something called a week, level 10 meeting where we all block out an hour and a half every single week. We all want to poke our eyes out, uh, but it's going to be helpful and uh, it's going to put us in the right direction for sure. I love it. I love it. Well, I just want to thank you guys so much. Thanks for uh, walking me through my first uh, leadership of this. Um, a little bit of computer issues, but I want to thank you guys, Wally, Shane, you guys are amazing. My mortgage coach community, I love you, you know that. And Jennifer, I hope your grandbaby is here on the ground. And Todd and Dave, we will see you next week. And Marcy, always thank you for setting this up for us. So thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Happy Friday. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.